And man, there are sewer mains running around right here, so there is a good chance that a good percentage of this is a little bit of, of doo doo. Welcome to the fascinating world of traffic signals. Tonight, I want to go over what we're doing at this intersection here in Diverville, Mississippi, and what we have to do here on this ongoing project from Hurricane Zeta. We are going to be upgrading all the vehicle detection to the new iTerrace Neck system. And plus, we are going to be adding some FYAs where these doghouse signals are. And we will be swapping out this enclosure. Right now, they have a 12-phase cabinet. You can make this work with an FYA. Change around some jumpers in the backboard. And we can change the outputs down here to 9 through 12. But since they have heads here, there is ways to run it in compact mode. You can make it work. But that's not what we're going to do. They want us to upgrade the controller cabinet. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with a 16 phase cabinet and do the detection upgrade and a controller upgrade, the whole nine yards. And then the existing signals here at this intersection will stay. Besides those doghouse ones, we will replace with the FYAs. So they have called us out here because they say detection's not working properly here. And it's actually kind of weird. I just saw phase four, which is this green light over here. When it was on, it was not holding a call and same deal. Let's see if it jumps, it's about to. Okay, it jumped. So some of the detection's working just fine. While it seems like the other stuff may be a little tricky. Uh, since they're complaining about that to begin with, we're probably going to pull out their detection cable and use that to pull in our new signal cable and our new detection cable to run it through these conduits and into the pool boxes and up to the poles where they need to go. And hopefully we get it done by the end of the week. I have noticed out here, they do have phase three over here, these guys here, and this is the detector card for it. It is holding in a call for phase three. That is this camera here. I'm not going to troubleshoot what their issue is with said camera. Instead, we're going to end up tearing down their detection, pulling in new cable, and hopefully having all of this swapped out tomorrow night. Uh, so they're gonna have to deal with one whole day of having no detection for the most part of this intersection. And then after that, they'll be back up and running without the issues they're currently having. So win-win for everybody. It's just gonna suck for one day because we are not going to get around to upgrading every camera and this cabinet tonight. But we'll definitely get that done tomorrow night and get all the cable pulled and maybe even up the poles and ready to go um, and make it real easy and real simple tomorrow. First things first, we can go over a few comments on the last video. A lot of y'all have asked about the lights on the work truck here and why we use green and white. Well, I want to say green's the highest visibility that you can see from the furthest distance. Yes, we also use amber lights, uh, but we order those and we did have them and we were one of the only ones around on the coast with them for a while. And now a lot of other people have started going to the green and white strobes because they are very high vis and we are working on the side of the roads in the road very often. So uh, the more light and the more protectant that we have, the better. So that is why we use these green and white lights. That was a big comment on there. Uh, did you use your gun or no? Did not, thankfully. Uh, never had to. Hopefully we'll never have to, but I do carry it to keep myself, my guys, and my family protected and very much advise anybody else to do the same. Another comment we had was about these boxes here. Uh, somebody asked about these stainless steel. They're not stainless steel. These are actually aluminum uh, enclosures the whole nine yards and they do have a little vent fan up here and a dirty filter but this filter is supposed to be swapped out every few to six months or so maybe every year it depends how bad of an area you're in uh but if you change out that filter it does have a good exhaust and airflow after that and all of this equipment is NEMA rated, meaning it should be able to withstand up to like 145 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's like an overcooked steak. The all NEMA equipment is supposed to be rated for that. Fade, you ask, what's your favorite span wire or mast arm? Love mast arm because it's not a lot of maintenance. So it's a little more expensive up front, but you'll spend a lot less time dealing with maintenance issues 
span cable and every time you have rain storms things like that it'll kick things out of whack and it is a lot of more maintenance so mast arm is my favorite but a span intersection especially a temporary one we could have an entire intersection up within a week so it's hard to beat that where a mast arm one typically is going to take about a month to install all the underground conduits foundations the poles themselves and everything else it'll take about a month while a wooden pole even some of the strand pole ones you can get done in a couple weeks to a week total if you're doing a temporary intersection if you're enjoying this video make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe also members will get the videos early let's get right back into it how come the state doesn't invest in protecting the signal cabinets with barriers so certain areas they will have like bollard poles and things kind of protecting cabinets protecting poles if it calls for that if they're close enough to the road or somewhere where it's 18 wheeler traffic but they typically won't spend the extra if especially for like pedestrians and crosswalks there they're not trying to add poles right in front of where somebody's going to walk into this crosswalk right there how's it going <laughs> uh but that's typical that's most of the comments let's get into the work night all right so as bad as i want to start just tearing out their old detection cables i'm gonna kind of feel bad doing so especially just something can happen where we don't actually come out here and finish up tomorrow i don't want to make them stand the entire weekend without detection so my plan is going to be there's an opticom right here on this shaft here or on this mast arm i'll remove the cable to and an opticom on this mast arm over here i can use that and pull in a string with that opticom cable and our new cable and then pull those cables back to the cabinet get it back in here i gotta i gotta replace it anyways in a new cabinet so i don't need to really land that that won't affect traffic or anything like that throughout the day so i think what i'm going to do is remove the opticom cables pull them out get our cables where they need to go and then pull the opticom cables back to the cabinet i'll roll them up in the bottom for now and then when i actually replace this enclosure rewire up the opticon cables and then we'll actually you know take out the coax and the power cables to those video cables once we get new cameras up and going uh just in case if anything happens tomorrow and we don't come out here and finish i think that's going to be the best route to go i'm going to now locate which opticon is that one in the cable and which one is over there and i'm gonna get it cut free get a string from here to this first pull box and then start doing everything around the intersection and get strings going in uh, and then my guys will be out here a little bit later i have them looking at something else right now and then they're going to come out here and meet with me and we'll pull the cable in uh, yeah check that out dude that's a that's a lamborghini i think don't know nothing about cars but i know that one's a lot faster than the ones i own and uh looks a lot better too so sounds better too oh we're taking a right turn now look at go dude i think it takes nothing to get up and going huh hey man one day on youtube if i make enough maybe maybe we'll get a lamborghini not at all i'd rather go get a house but pretty awesome to see around here all right so first things first this is all the opticom cable here and maybe a little extra but i'm gonna go ahead and start removing all the zip ties get it pulled out from the opticom device up here at the top of the cabinet here and luckily they're labeled and gladly this cabinet was installed by us back in 2012 looks great everything's labeled and marked hoping the quality of work held up and these underground conduits are still great out here in the field and this should be a real easy pull tonight so go ahead and get all of these zip ties cut I'm a pair of flush cutters here and we will start routing out figuring out which opticom goes where and then get them pulled out of the cabinet tie a string onto it tie our cable onto it and pull it the directions it needs to go and then we can pull the opticon cable back into the cabinet and these are for the emergency devices where uh fire department police ambulance they can use it to get a green light a little bit quicker at these intersections that's what the opticon devices do 
Right, so I am going to have to remove this guy out of the cabinet and put it into our new enclosure once we get to it. So I went ahead and disconnected the wiring harness. I'll have to remove the wiring harness itself as well and get this installed into the new cabinet once we replace it tomorrow. That won't be on this video here today, uh, but harness is off, this device is off now, and I can go ahead and start taking off and removing the Opticom cables themselves. Also guys, let me tell y'all, Tough Built sent me these uh, screwdrivers and so far, I'm really enjoying them. I was just about to go buy another Klein screwdriver because mine just doesn't seem to be working well on the Phillips head side anymore. But this guy right here, I think I think this set's about to just become my new set of screwdrivers, especially any free tool is better than one you got to pay for. So I really do appreciate that, Tough Bill. Look at this guy. And I mean, they, they have like caved this thing out. There's like 30 roaches right here, a bunch. I almost want to get a shovel and start tearing into it. All right, let's this cable out. Some real jacks down so this protection cable cap five sacks of it radio I think we can make work not as much concerned about pulling a cable out of that but we'll probably fish tape it to this pole and fish tape it to the poles per se. We'll just get the cables to the pool boxes themselves. That one should be going across the road to that guy, to the pool box, and we'll get our cable out. Then the other one should be going to that pole there. So we'll get our cable across the street, drop off the five conductor and one of the cat fives there to this pole. And then we'll just pull a five conductor or a cat five over to that pole there. And then we'll just fish tape from boxes to pole itself and get it in there. Horse of the roach is right here. Good old sewer drain. And probably a lift station right here. Oh, oh gross. Dude, I had to do a, uh, what, a card rack in Hattiesburg and picture the cabinet being four foot from a sewer drain like this the whole time. That was the quickest card rack, probably an hour and a half tops. It I was just running through that thing to get done. It smelled like dookie. I watch vehicles as you cross the street. They like to run you over. Have a red light. Cool. Get these pool boxes open. And then me and them are gonna start pulling cable. Going ahead, I got this box lit open, got the pole open, went across the street already over there, and got the same ordeal over there opened everything ready to go he's going to be tying on that cable all the ground cable cat five the five conductor five conductor needs to go to this pole and up to the doghouse signal up there in the air uh, all that will be dropped off here at this side of the pole and then we'll pull off enough slack out of one of the cat fives and get it over there for a new camera up top should be a pretty easy pull everything in here looks pretty pretty good whoever did this previous install did a fantastic job obviously it gets dirty over time but it's what what you got to deal with you now i only saying that because we did the uh previous install but we're gonna make this happen should go fairly easy once he's ready he'll holler at me and i'll identify which opticom cable down here and this pool box to start pulling out and we also have a string attached to pull it back into the cabinet over there to keep them up at this intersection. All right, so it's this Opticom cable here we're gonna pull out and that's actually going across the street to the other side. Let's go ahead and start pulling this cable out. Going very easy. It's a little wet though. Should put some gloves on maybe get a better grip on this cable, but not too bad. Our extra guy done called out on us tonight or maybe running behind so would be nice to have an extra hand just to feed the cables to him and then help feed it to me again you always got to match their pace if you start walking with it he won't be able to keep up meaning you will struggle more i've always said feeding is more difficult than pulling and, uh, believe it all right it could have been going easier here but that ain't terrible. We had the extra guy 
This will be gravy train. Tell y'all what. Ahead of our cable is about to come out. There it is. It's our cable there. Man. Just gonna get a little bit out and cut the string out because that's a pain to follow with all the time. Cut the string there. And we'll end up just tying it back on once we get across. We'll get it set. Make sure, make sure to always tie your string to something. It could be other cables, it could be whatever. Just make sure if you're putting a string in a pull box, you tie it off so it don't get pulled back in or pulled out some direction. We'll tie that real quick. So now I want to get measurements. I already know from this pull box to this shaft, you're looking around six feet, seven, maybe eight feet. By the time you go down, back up into the bottom of the shaft, shaft to 17 feet and then every step every stride you take is going to be three feet so come over here stand beside the shaft start walking out four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen to the bottom of the head don't get ran over you got 13 times three so you got what is that like 42 feet i'm probably wrong probably 39 my bad i was off a little bit 39 feet plus your 17 and then plus give yourself about six to eight foot i'm gonna give it eight foot of slack coming out the head uh that's gonna be 64 feet we need 64 feet coming out the bottom of this pole so we're gonna pull another about 78 feet that'll be enough to come out here go up over to the signal head and we'll pull a little extra on the cat five because we got to go up six to seven feet to the camera plus leave a good drip loop up there so we will add a little bit more to the cat five there and then we will pull a bunch of extra slack on the other cat five and tie it to this opticom cable on the ground and get it over to that direction all right got all the slack out we need to get to the pole closest to us and then gonna work on getting some slack to go across the road and go to the pole over there so pretty easy pull should be done somewhat soon and then we got to hit a different intersection on not cable but other work probably not going to show much of that stuff tonight this will be the majority of the video pulling the cable here and tomorrow night y'all will see the enclosure swap and getting some of these cameras swapped out and the head swapped out here at this intersection would you look at this this thing would pick you up and crawl away with you Ooh. i don't like living in a world where these things exist with us mm. y'all folks in australia don't know how you do it looks like a banana spider is what i assume it is yeah i mean if you don't like that dude you really wouldn't like a hunter no that's the australian one yeah i've seen the videos hey they're like dogs no not that big but big as a house cat almost yeah yeah i've seen the videos where they're running across and I, i'd pull a gun out and start shooting at them <laughs> heck no i don't know how they can deal with that stuff there well, you know mm. how people keep a baseball bat in their corner of their yeah literally got to use a baseball bat to kill a spider you can't yeah, even step on the dang thing australia Ugh. you have to screw that not moving to australia I, I was about to say it looks awesome to go visit but the moment i interact with one of them spiders i'm never coming back all right we got our cables besides the run to the closest pole and across over there so far we got it across there across the other direction now we're pulling that opticom cable back through and once we have that we'll go get everything tucked away on them poles probably go take a lunch and then come back and finish pulling this intersection shouldn't be too difficult this one is pretty simple could have been easier but ain't terrible what i'm gonna do now is match up the two cat fives to one of these opticoms back to this cabinet plus the five conductor so let me pull out it's going this way and everything cut out there and we're going to get our distance i like to call that a, a constant which is going to be a number between this pull box here and the cabinet and because of where the opticoms land then I like to cut my new cables a little bit longer. I like to keep a little extra slack. So get it all pulled together, kind of how we are now. If we have to, we get a little bit more slack off the reels and boxes. And when they make it up to the 
see where they end right here instead of cutting them right where the opticoms end we're going to go ahead and give ourselves about six to eight more feet and we'll cut right back here and that'll work out perfect there we go now all of these cables are ready to pull back into the cabinet and when we come back from lunch we will pull a five conductor and a cat five to this pole with a pool box and then to the pole over across the street and we'll get a cat five into this pole here and have it ready to go up and back to the cabinet we'll get everything back into the cabinet and just roll it up for the night and then tomorrow night at least two plans and my pet my plans in my head and everything tomorrow night we'll be back inside of this cabinet swapping it and doing the field work and then we'll call it a week and we'll go home and enjoy our weekend all right we are getting ready now after lunch which we just had to pull to this pole here oh that's cute it's missing its cover that's what happens to the cable pretty quick if you uh if you don't keep a cover on these mast arm poles here the stuff it'll just change color and you'll see it's all ate up this cable looks like junk now maybe enough slack we're pulling a new one for the signal we're actually doing but don't even know if i don't even want to sit there and it's going to end up catching on the shaft itself and probably going into flash if i mess with it too much and leave it tucked away maybe we'll may add one later needs to needs to be brought up but pool box opened up and we can get ready to pull this thing all right, pretty simple here. We're gonna be using the smaller cable in all of this, which I only have three cables. So the smaller one's gonna be the Opticom. We're gonna take that out, pull it out with a string and everything attached to it. And to be able to pull it back in and get our new five conductor and our Cat5 pulled out this pull box. It should go pretty smooth. I like that we see gravel and everything it means that hopefully nothing will be broken. So let's get to it. Oh yeah, I got a bunch of mud on this guy. <clears throat> not gonna be as fun of a pool. Maybe not that bad though. Maybe they just dumped some in. While well, the original install and it ain't packed full. Because it is moving. At least there's that. Getting dirty though. Cool. There you go, y'all. I'll get a little of that. A little bit of dookie. Ooh, yeah, that smells great. Just kidding, guys, it doesn't smell like dookie. Definitely looks like it, though. Boys, long pull, and we're getting close to the head of our new cable to come out. It's right there in the pipe, I can see it. Let's grab that. little bit of it out we cut the string off and then we'll also just get enough to get that ground cable into the bottom of the shaft and we'll tie it to the shaft and back to the cabinet plus tying it to every pole out in the field that's what we're doing with that ground cable just tying everything together and grounding it all to get a little bit better down here on the coast we don't we're on the best soil for grounding got a lot of sand so i'm just trying to go that extra mile just enough. <clears throat> and then let's get it to the bottom of the pole i need about 100 foot almost to make it to a signal head and to the cameras so and did the math that was about 90 90 feet or so with the verticals so this stuff it looks disgusting though Usually just push it back and forth a bunch, which it's doing right now. It's loosening up, Can free up the knot. And this is just a simple overhand knot if you're trying to tie two things together. It's about the best route you can go is just twirl your hands around, back into it, and then pull tight, and you'll have a little knot. And as long as you pull tighter, it gets tighter for the most part. I've had them come undone, but not often. The pipes have been extremely deep here. It's like they had it set and raised grade. So. We're just going to get a little extra of that ground cable than what I believe to get to the bottom of the pole. And then we'll cut the ground free. Or we'll just pull it into the pole itself. 
40 more feet. And then we'll be good to get where we need to get when we come install all this stuff tomorrow. So. Twenty-three. Three big pulls up. Which I did one. All right, that's got to be semi close right there. Sixteen oh four. Let's let's pull up, pull an extra six feet to just be sure. All right, we got all the cable laid out. That's all we need. Uh, if you could, grab a couple rags. Some rags for my truck and a water bottle. And bring them this direction. And we'll get this closed up. And get stuff back in the cabinet and be done. I say done. We'll be done at this intersection for the night. We're not going to that Divergent Diamond. And finish up the signs there. We'll go pick up the bucket truck. Get them signs done. And then probably just call it a night. And that one cat five, let me find my short one. And if it's enough, I probably won't pull more, but I think that's this guy. Yeah, I'm gonna get like. All right, something like that. That's gonna be plenty enough. <coughs> and let's see this ground. Yeah, probably ain't gonna make it to the pole, but it, it'll work out. We'll, we'll end up cutting it and gurney and everything right there so just roll up the extra slack of that in the pool box and let's roll up this cat five that's going to go into that pole and just throw it in the pool box too and then i'll just roll up all this in the cabinet for now and go some go hang some signs and get out of here all right guys we have successfully pulled all the cable we need to pull for the video detection for the new FYAs, it's rolled up inside of this enclosure, good to go, and going to be ready to swap this guy out tomorrow. Uh, hate doing it on Thursdays because we work 410s and Thursdays are Fridays and the weekend. Anytime you do a cabinet swap, you kind of enhance the risk of having a call out or an issue with it. But I don't have anything else planned at this point to kill just a Thursday and then come back and do this Monday um so plans are going to be to change this around unless i think of something different but not a lot that i can think of that's going to be different and for the rest of the night man and him are going to go down to that diversion diamond and get all the signage changed out we only have like three signs left to change there so we'll go take care of that and call it a night sucks when people call out you know it leaves you leaves you down a guy but it is what it is we still made stuff happen got all our cable pulled and we will have a productive tomorrow night so as always i do appreciate you guys and thanks for watching